Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. We hope you find something that will touch your life today and tomorrow. Faith is Alive Ministries is located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. You may visit us any Sunday for worship service, which begins at 11 a.m. And now, open your hearts and your minds to the spirit of a living God. The time has finally come, my brethren. The pastor wants to announce that beginning Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021, in-house services will resume at 11 a.m. Psalm 122, 1 and 2. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And now, here we are standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Even though vaccines are being distributed and given, due to the COVID-19 restrictions, temperatures will be checked and social distancing will be in effect in the sanctuary. Masks are protocols, and for those who do not have one, we will have one for you. Come let us enjoy the Lord together in song and praise. Services will begin at 11 a.m. There will be no Sunday school at this time. Please pass the word to the membership that beginning Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021, we will resume in-house services. Be on the lookout for more information, and if there are any changes, it will be on Facebook or One Call. Once again, thank you for listening to and watching Faith is Alive Ministries featuring First Baptist Church, Harrisonburg, Virginia, with the Dr. C.E. Williams, Senior Pastor. Principal, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God for this, another day that he has blessed us with. And above everything else, we want to thank you for, for tuning in to our, our First Baptist broadcast here with Faith is Alive Ministry. We pray that all is well there in the homes and the families and as we continue to embrace uh, and the, the uncertainty that is going on ahead of us as we look toward the, uh, amen, the near future. Uh, the Word of God is our, our refuge and we draw nigh unto Christ and you know, we're looking for His return uh, for His church. So we want to be, keep this a wake-up call, this is an awakening time period and, and we want God to just continuously bless us even in the midst uh, of our storm. So uh, uh, we invite you to open every heart and receive the blessing that is set before us on the message for today. And learn how to and, and be able to just get loose and let go and let God have uh, amen his way. Uh, okay, we see you at the end of the service and uh, enjoy the presence of the Lord. See so many of you this morning. Bless them and warm my heart to see everybody. Praise God for this morning. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. I'm glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are here today to worship our great God and Savior as we recognize and celebrate this resurrection day. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be able to stand in his presence this morning and give him the glory and honor. Amen. 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 At this time, we will have an invocation by the pastor, by Reverend Byrne. Reverend Byrne. Reverend Byrne, rise. Reverend Byrne, bowed and the eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come with you with open hearts, Lord. Giving you all that we have right now, Lord. We come in one by one for this one, Lord. We're going to lift up our pastor as we bring forth the word of God. Yes. And we'll see it and sell in our hearts and our minds, Lord, what he hears and the word we do, Lord God. Right now, Lord, we just want to give you the glory yes. and the honor yes. on this resurrection day, oh Lord. So we give our all to you today. Yes. Our whole attention, our whole body, mind, and soul, oh Lord. We're going to continue to press on to you and hold on to your unchanging hands, yes. oh God. As we move on through this service today.
also like to have a reading of the scriptures by uh, Reverend Burns. We're going to be reading John chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. You have to say amen if you don't stand up. And the word reads, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. And the last days, Jesus says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, thus, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. And whosoever liveth and believe me shall never die. Believe thus this, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Amen. At this time, we'd like to uh, direct your attention to your bulletin. Now, you, you will notice the announcement there. But we do have a special announcement this morning. Uh, it's from FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency. It's regarding funeral reimbursement programs. It says the funeral reimbursement program will launch in a week or two. Please share. FEMA is reimbursing up to $7,000 for COVID-19 funerals. Amen. Amen. Please, uh, please pass on for widest dissemination to our black community. To any family member who paid for a funeral, please keep funeral documentation. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Sad, sad that it would have to be the case, but if that is the case, uh, there is some assistance or some help for you. And if you just re, uh, turn to your bulletin, please remember the sick and shut-ins with prayers, cards, calls, and visits. And we see we have uh, Sister Reeves here, Mr. Myers, Mr. Fletcher, Sister Renee Sampson Myers, Brother Barksdale, and Sister Rosetta Wheel. Also, please do not handle Communion sacraments until appropriate time in the service. Until further notice, please be dismissed from the sanctuary at the direction of the deacons and ushers. We are requesting a silent prayer in memory of the lives lost to coronavirus. And if you would notice, uh, the rest of the bulletin, we have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and the dial-in information is all there for you. We do have a food bank ministry operating now. And, uh, Mayor Reed will host a question and answer session on the COVID-19 vaccine, and it is an impact on the black community, so please read that part. And uh, if you're not vaccinated, Here's an opportunity to find out how you can be vaccinated, and it's important. And we encourage everyone that can, please get a vaccination. So with that, we would like to have our tithe and offering by the deacons and ushers.
where we worship him through our dedication, demonstrate our obedience to his word. Scripture says, him that so bountifully, so shall ye reap. So sparingly, we shall reap sparingly. We ask that you give, give as God has blessed you. We know that you have been using the tithe, the offering program that's worked well, but we know that there are still some folks who are willing to, who will be putting in the offering. We'll be lifting that at this time. We have to give God bless you, give with a cheerful heart. We'll be coming around to you. Just, just like you.
known to us for a time. We commit it back to your work and your service. Use it as you see fit to grow this ministry, to have outreach in the community, to win souls, and to change lives. Yes. We ask this in the humble recognition of Jesus, what he did for us yes. 2,000 years ago. Thank you for this service. Thank you for all the work that's been put in so that we might be here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Celebrate. Amen. We have a place to call our worship home. And it didn't have to be so, God. So many places cannot say so. So we thank you. Despite COVID, despite death, despite sickness, you are God. Yes. You are faithful. Yes. You have carried us and brought us. You have provided for us and yes. healed us and guided us. Thank you, God. You deserve this worship and praise. In Jesus' name, we give it up.
the class would be winning, as well as he came through a channel of ministries uh, collected together. But when she came, the ministry uh, is honored, amen, by a school institution. Somebody say amen. amen. Somehow or another, it's kind of hard to honor a certificate of schooling and not have a covering all over it at the same time. Somebody, somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. So we actually go under extensive training. Actually, it was ordination training, what most people call it, the 14 Articles of Faith. So to make this quick and brief, she rolled into it. Oh, this is too much for me. I don't know if I can do this sometimes. I don't want to personally. She's not here. Thank Minister Reverend Hearn for coaching her, along with Reverend Berry and Reverend Burns pulling up the chain there. But faithfully, she has completed extensive training without error. I say without error. I'm talking about we could not make this thing. And move on to the next portion. And she scored a hundred on each one. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. And I thought I was going to set aside a time where you can see the work she's, not only that she's doing in stewardship, but with the help of other members of the church, the ushers, other teams, other ministries, uh, we now have a, a successful food bank by her anchor. But the fruit of her ministry is uh, the dedication of the Articles of Faith, which you can't preach without doctrine. Amen. We have it backwards, unfortunately, 200 years later. We use it, let the preacher go out and preach, and then we ordain it with the 14 Articles of Faith. It's backwards. I'm not saying that's my choice. I found out it to be true. So we are online training, even in Second National, online training ministers where they they must have fruit, work, and guidance in their ministry. And doctrine is the only thing. The Bible is the only one that can do that. You cannot teach people the Holy Spirit. They got to have it. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> so today we just want to honor this young lady presenting to her the license. Actually to preach the gospel, teach the gospel, teach Sunday school. She's made proof of her ministry just by giving as in care every Friday, every Sunday, every Saturday. And the food bank is a great success with the help of the ministries here at the church, the deacons, the ushers, other volunteers. So if you have families that are in need, this stewardship ministry has just blossomed because it's hard to feed a hungry soul as it is, but when they're, when they're hungry physically, it's a double thing. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Babies are hungry. Since COVID, people are dying. Malnutrition. But our doors are open, and I thank the team. Let's give her a hand. We'll give a presentation right after the service. Uh, amen. And that presentation is a certificate of not of training, but for her ministry uh, under the stewardship of this body, even the Second National. She will be working hard uh, in the ministry. It's not all pulpit. It, it's not all preaching. You've got to have something else. There's more talent in here than what my dad granddaddy used to sit in the corner at Liverpool. There's so much talent in I've seen it since the COVID. People are coming out of woodwork. Keep on coming out of the woodwork because we got work to do. Give yourself a hand just for being here in the name of Jesus. My thanks to each of you for your prayers. First lady, uh, I got you had another phone yesterday. It wasn't really a phone call. It was more like she sitting down beside the bed, sitting too close to the edge. And Lord, I thought I heard somebody. I thought it was an echo at first. Well, I come running out of the study. And she was, she was crying. She's going back into the, the fold of the ministry. For the position on the day of the actual incident. Just a reminder. I think that's what scared her the most. But she didn't have the strength to get up. So keep her in prayer, your cards, your notes, your letters. And she sends a special gift to the young people. We have a few of them here. And if the young people came in, oh, we got the baby, we got some candy for her. She sent some candy for all the children. Let's give her a hand, amen. Even in the action. Uh, 
And the portion of, of what we're trying to do is let the Spirit of the Lord continuously move. I personally want to thank the ministers for all the work that they've been doing uh, through in and out of the Bible study, the coming together. And as I look out over uh, the congregation today, nobody but God could have put this together for us, and it's not going to stop. I look for the overflow. Because there's something about, there's nothing wrong with vision. We have to use it. But don't use it for the front. As in the beginning. Use it for the back of it. Because fellowship is important to you. Look, you may not see some of these folks work again. And that's why fellowship, that's what Jesus was talking about. For Satan, I, the fellowship of the assembly of others. I want you to focus now on the 11th chapter. Bow your heads in prayer. And amen. We shall briefly come before you. And I don't mean before you too long. We need to come with stay in the spirit of giving our hearts to the Lord and feeding you at the same time. Spirit. That 11th chapter, amen, is a blessing to us. You, you can remain seated. We're not just going to just read it. We're just, we're just going to try to come back through it. So you can uh, so you can feel where God is coming from. Amen this morning. Jesus and Martha those that were gathered and heard they've been talking about Lazarus had already died. So what does it have to do with being risen? 99.5% of our knowledge of the resurrection is very dim. In this day and time. Why? Because many of us don't believe. Not only that he died, but the purpose of and the real reason in the resurrection. And it's important to us to understand in order to be resurrected. Can I get a witness out there? And first, the conversation was going on as we bow our heads in prayer. I want you to ask God to open up your mind, open up your hearts. And above all, just open up the avenue where we can just come together on one accord. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. And it's no other help that I look for right now. I know that thou would withdraw from us with them. Shall I go? Keep me now in perfect peace. Our hearts and our minds say, Oh, thank you. Thank you for this awesome day. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for uh, not only the opening, but the beginning of the beginning. Uh, for many things to come and pass. 2021 is our year to, to move back, not only into the basics of worship, but changes that will take place that will make us feel better about serving a living, living Savior. This we ask. And hold it down to us in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Martha looks at Jesus here, according to the scripture. In the beginning at that 24th verse, Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Talk about laughing here. And I, I want you to just take that particular portion of what Martha is saying here. And as you connect with Jesus, comes right back to it. Says, he said, I am the resurrection uh, and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. I want you to keep that thought in your mind. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. But look what he says in that 26th verse. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, talking about you and I, shall never die. Believe us. He asked, he, he, he looked at him. Believe us, how it is? Well, to focus and, and really to, to get connected to the message itself, we realize that not only all of what the world is 
celebrating on this day. Some celebrated on yesterday. Some will be celebrating uh, the week after this. Some have already celebrated the week before. They call it Holy Week. And, and then that was Good Friday that we understand in three days that he got up. All of this in celebration means nothing. Uh, we have not been resurrected. Uh, it, it means nothing to us except for celebrating a holiday, no different than any other day, uh, because uh, the true meaning of the resurrection is, is very deep in us, and we must have that, 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 that inward, uh, help me Holy Ghost, yes. that inward built uh, in uh, uh, suppression of, of, of faith and love and hope that we will see him and be resurrected all in and with the same power. Well, I, I stop by to say that this, this is probably, this 26 verse really wraps it up. And it gives us a text title, it gives us a subject to come from, and various scriptures we're going to be dealing with, but what I want you to think on now, that there is power in the resurrection. Amen. Look at somebody real quick and say, neighbor, uh, this is no joke. <laughs> Not only is there power, but there is power in the resurrection. So in order to know the power, in order to feel, in order to, to be with and in the power, we've got to realize something that has to take place with each one of us. This is no doubt the most encouraging statement, uh, amen, in the Bible for the Christian or the believer to, to understand. Especially when he said, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he turned around and looked at both of them uh, as he was talking to them. Don't you believe this? And that's a question that should be answered by you and I. We ought to know what we believe. We ought to know why we believe. And above everything else, in order to have the power that God gave us, we have to be resurrected. Uh, amen in the power. So it deals with something that takes place with you and I. Let me push that forward for you. This was the greatest promise to Jesus when he was talking to him. He said he was trying to really offer them even then when he was talking about Lazarus being dead and then he said you'll see me in the resurrection. He was promising then them eternal life. Somebody say amen. amen. The gift that God has has given to man is with his son, he, he gave us a, what really activates and, and makes our life so hopeful is the faith that we have in Almighty God. So in order to see the power in the resurrection, we have to be resurrected ourselves. Uh, somebody said, well, I was resurrected by Christ. I was resurrected with Christ. I was resurrected in Christ. All three of them mean something to us because we have to know that we have been resurrected. Can I get a witness? It's not only Jesus getting up, but let's realize that we have to be resurrected in order to, when the day of Christ shall rise, if you're not living and in the grave, you'll be caught up to me. You don't want to go the opposite way. Come on, somebody pray with me out here. This resurrection is so important to every one of us. We're going through day by day, year after year, Easter after Easter, and some folks still are wondering, well, did he really get up? Did he really raise in three days? I mean, the Bible says it, but then we got a problem understanding the Bible and the Bible thing, because guess what? It doesn't justify our flesh. Amen. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. I believe I got a witness out there. Amen. Jesus is trying to tell us, even when he raised that, that the body must die. But he gave proof that he had the power to resurrect the dead. Come on, somebody help me out there. You have to believe that he can resurrect you in order for you to see him face to face. So if it don't take place down here, guess what? It's not going to happen in the beauty. It's got to happen in your heart. It's got to happen in your soul. You either have to be resurrected with him when he left the tomb, by him, where you 
know that he's saved you just to give you salvation and with him when he comes back again. This brings us three, three episodes here. Past, present, and future. Yeah, I'm almost through. It's in front of us. Your past. I'm not talking about all the mess you did. I'm not talking about all the days that you can't get back. Your past is when Jesus hung, bled, and died before you was even born. Before you even come out of your mother's womb, he had saved your life. That was in the past. You're here now, not by osmosis, but you're here by the grace of God. Because he gave his life. But if you don't believe that he got up out of the grave, you can't resurrect with him. You let doubt in your mind that he lives. And because he lives, you don't need worry about tomorrow. You just take it day by day. Because all you're waiting on is for him to come back. What about this past? In the past, he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yes, sir. Somebody say amen up there. Amen. Now, if you're still in the dark, now, I don't expect you to say amen. <laughs> but if you see some light on the horizon, if you see that he's coming back again, if you have been resurrected with Christ from even the past and know that he has forgiven you for your sins, put your hand to say it because you know that you know that you know that you have been resurrected. What hurts so bad is we go in day after day, wondering. Well, Mary said, Wait, uh, geez, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Jesus was trying to tell us that. The residents of the old body is <laughs> no good no more. He was going to give a life. A new body. Yes. Help me somebody. Hey, go back to it. Don't go back to the film service. But stay with this line. When this earthly tabernacle mm -hmm. dissolves, resolves, pulls up out of here, whatever you want to say, I've got another building. Mm -hmm. uh, not me. Not me. By hand. That was not made by man. Some people put man there. <laughs> Flesh and blood cannot get into the kingdom. So don't mess around here and fool yourself. Go to church 50 years and then just go right on to hell. Come on, man. Just because you was resurrected with Christ. How can I do that, Pastor? You've got to deny. Live the name of try to understand. Jesus told him that you must be what? Born again. Well, I'm almost through. This resurrection thing. Past, present, and future. The three reasons, and the reasons, there are many reasons why we should know about the resurrection. Not only know about it, believe in knowing that it is. This is not your home. You're here on borrowed time. It is not your home, so stop treating it like you're going to be here forever. Yeah, I understand. Nobody wants to die. According to the word, we must die in order to live again. Can I get a witness? I'm not talking about the freedom of death. I'm talking about eternal life. Because eternal life means I can be with the master. I can sit down on the right hand side. I can shout and jump. I can cry. I can do whatever. And a land where we'll never grow old. I believe I got a witness out there. This future, this past, and even the present, all of us are passing through. And our past can't get to the present unless we accept Jesus as our personal Savior. Got a few more minutes. That past. Is already locked in. When he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not 
what they do. In the past, your sins were already forgiven. Why or how can we hold back and go through the action and don't have the experience? If my sins have already been forgiven, I ought to let go and let God have His way in my life. Have I got a witness out there? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I just can't be going through day by day. I've got to take Jesus all of the way. I've got somebody here that don't mind putting on the whole of God. I've got somebody here that don't mind telling the world that he does, he will. He will preach tomorrow. I've got anybody here that can get on their feet and give them 10 seconds of praise. You 
have resurrection for God. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes. Let me say it one more time. Say it again. <laughs> if you believe that he got up, how many believe that he got up out of the grave? Yes. That is, he didn't hit him. Yes, sir. Yes. And if you believe that he got yes, up out of the grave, yes. you, in the present, this day in time, now have resurrection power. Power to do what? See? Don't go back to the flesh. Because he's not talking about that. When the burden seems like it's too hard to bear. That's where Jesus steps in. The resurrected power must be used by the believer. It can't just be just don't come in and just warm the bench. If you've been resurrected, you ought to have some fire in your bones. You ought to have some rubble about your trouble. You ought to have a mind and a man of mind. That this power that I got, that only God can give me the, the, the walk that I have, the talk that I have, the mind that I have. Only God can give me peace in the midst of my storm. Somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. When you feel that, thank you. You just, 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 just can't make it. God steps right in on time. Well, what does this mean? From past to present, the power that you got to be resurrected, it takes you toward the future. Look at somebody real quick and say, Pax. Yes. Oh, you sound like you're doing God a favor. Oh, I take that back. The mask is on. That's why I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, Pax. Yes. Present. 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 Now, for the soldiers, who have been on the battlefield, and for those who have, we're all on the battlefield for Jesus. It's time to go airborne. Airborne meaning our future is in the resurrection. We can't wait until Easter to celebrate the resurrection. Amen. Why? Because we do not know the day or the hour when the Son of Man shall step out of that cloud. And in my closing, be sure. You can't convince mom, dad, brother, sister, friend, neighbor. Be sure that you are resurrected. Why? With and in. What is he talking about? Talking about Christ. If you're resurrected, why? If you got eternal life. Somebody say amen. If you're resurrected with it, then you die and you the old flesh is going to get out of the way and you're going to put on a new body. I ain't even going to worry about what color it's going to be. It's just going to be a new body by Jesus. We ain't got time to take a life. We're going to McCroy or to J.C. Pinnis or somewhere. Huh? But most of all, by, with, but in Christ. And in this, this is our eternal life. This is the present. You pass through some storm. Hello? There's some more storms coming. Amen. We're not prophesizing. But I declare this decree of sickness, this power, these are all part of the many signs of Jesus coming back in here. Amen. And you live through it by the grace of God. Yes. And yet you still can't believe that he resurrected from the dead. When he resurrected from the dead, he resurrected in you. Amen. That's the only way that we can get to the future. Past, present, and future. The only way we can get to heaven is through the resurrection. Jesus told it earlier when he was talking to Lazarus. And we wait until he's in, he is risen. Mary Martha, we know the story of him. The stone rolled away. All this. Great. The story is, has just locked our mind. But let's not only wait until the story for year after year, we have to be resurrected daily in Christ. Turn your life around. Get on board. Don't live in the past because he's already finished when he said, Father, forgive me. Don't try to stay in the present because you're not going to live forever. You didn't come here to live forever. That's why he did what he did on the cross. Yeah. To buy you some time. 
even though it's 200 generations after, from Adam on down, that's still in that. No, you ain't that old. But the bottom line is, you're here for a purpose. If you're sitting down, if you're slumped, if you're just dragging, if you're just passing through life, waiting to die, okay, well, that's terrible. Because he didn't die for that. He died to set you free from burning in hell Amen. the rest of your life. Amen. So come on to the present, into the future. Take hold of the eternal life because he is the resurrection. Yes. Use the power that he gave. Yes. Get to work yes. on the kingdom that God has prepared for you. Beginning to work is roll up your sleeve and stop waiting for somebody else to tell you to do something. Be about your father's business. Because yes. he's soon to come. Look at somebody real quick and say, man, be soon now. But I'm not through. I'm not through. I'm not through. I'm going to be ready to work. By the power. By the power. In Jesus Christ. Put your hands together. Really good this time, but it always means I'm running behind time a little bit. Y'all should have told me to be quiet 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your love. We understand, uphold, and much more of what your expectations that you want us to do. Lord, we, we're not only just taking this as a part time, we're going to go full, the full time. We're going to get back into the ethics of Bible study and the vision of you set before us watching and looking not only at the world behind us, but helping others to find Jesus for themselves. And renew the right spirit in us. Restore the joy of our salvation. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Give him a hand, clap and praise. <laughs> amen. As we prepare our hearts, amen, and our minds for our Holy Communion, immediately after the Holy Communion, we want you to sit tight. We just like to just Bubble out of here. We got to go out opening as we came in. Amen. But Holy Communion is a specific time, a special time uh, that has been set aside. Uh, amen. For us to celebrate. And we're thanking God for when He gave us the vision to open up our Easter sunrise service. Uh, it was a vision that as He was resurrected, we need to be resurrected in Him as well uh, on the first day of the Easter. Sunday itself. And amen. So as we prepare ourselves, amen, and a portion of our, our Holy Communion, uh, and all that we do, uh, just a re quick reminder, please not touch, do not touch the instruments uh, until told to do so. But if you enjoy the message, wave your hand. Amen. amen. If the message meant something to you, uh, then tell somebody else uh, that we, amen, we have power that we're not using. There is power in that resurrection. Mm -hmm. But guess who's controlling that power? Jesus is controlling the power, but you are the instrument. So in the course, uh, because of our discipline and hygiene reasons, there's anyone here, a man who don't know Jesus, as you say, and somehow the message touched your soul, your heart, and you desire to, uh, a man, to to make him the choice of your life. So Lord, I just want to be resurrected with and in by you. Uh, so I can have the power to get through until you come back again. And amen. See me right after the service. Amen. See one of the deacons. See one of the deacons right after the service. But above all, don't you leave here today without a, not only a change mind, but a made up mind that you're resurrected in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. 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 Now give him a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. He came that we may have light and that we may have more abundantly. And in the portion of the light that he gave, he brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And out of the light that came, it shines into the perfect day. We're living in dark days, even though it's daylight outside. And even as the earth rotates around the sun and the moon, uh, it gets dark sooner or later, but there's 
a land coming where there will be no more darkness. There will be no more bad times, no hard times, but there land where, amen, every day will be Sunday and Sabbath will have no end. We make that promise to God, and even as Moses and Israel made their promise to him. They had a covenant. They made it with this night directly. Not did, but it give us some covenant. Give us some insight. You remain seated. Amen. As we go through the covenant. And be reminded of our promise to God. If you're there and you have one of these in your hand, if not, let the ushers know. If you desire to stand, okay, come on, stand on up there. Okay. It's something that's in steel, baby. Which is good. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. How you live as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior. Profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage in the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. We strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort. To sustain the worship or its discipline. And doctrine. To contribute cheerfully and readily to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel to our whole nations. To religiously educate our children. To walk circumspectly in the world. The war on top of backbiting and excessive anger. We further days watch over one another, brother and sisterly love. To aid each other in sickness and distress. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of the Savior to seek it without delay.
And the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Yes. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped. Yes. Saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we come with head bowed, thankful hearts for yet another opportunity to celebrate this holy Sabbath. We pray, Father God, and thank you that we would recognize that while the world celebrates this particular Sunday as Resurrection Day, all of us of the household of faith consider every day Resurrection Day and try to live a resurrected life. We just thank you for your assistance through the Holy Spirit that we're able to do, walk, and be as we should be in our Christian journey. We're asking now that as we celebrate, your word says as often as we do it, we do show your death until you come again. So we're asking a special anointing on the wafer that will be reflecting yes. for us, that will represent your broken body, which was broken for us. We just want to thank you for it, ask a special blessing upon it, as well as the juice, that it would represent the, your blood. And that that means that without the shedding of the blood, there was no remission of sin. But for the completed work of the cross, we say thank you. Thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. I saw directed Jesus on that night. In front of you is the, the symbol of the bread which is broken by. So gaily done by our deacons. If there's not one in front of you, please raise your hand. Jesus fasted the cup and the bread as he broke it. But you have yours right there in front of you. We ask you not to partake it until directed to do so, because we're still in the same perfection of what God has commanded us to do on today. So just follow my wording, and amen, we, sh we should be fine in every aspect. And when he had took the bread and broke it, he said, take ye, this is my body, that was broken for you. I know that he resurrected in me, because when I break this bread, I do this until he comes again. Let us eat. Knowing that somebody he would be betrayed, he would mention that somebody here is going to betray me. He was looking around and said, Lord, I said, I am. Judas already knew this. 30 pieces of silver. But in his blood, he paid for our sin. And as we drink of this cup, we do this until we come, remembering him there, not only the cross, but not only remembering him there, but he got up out of the grave. 
rose with all power in his hand. Let us pray. Somebody shout in there. Amen. Be sure you pay close attention to the ushers and the deacons that depart from here that after the benediction, amen, and to stand to your feet and so directed by the minister. So directed by the minister. <laughs> Let us prepare our heart for the benediction at this time. Let us pray. Merciful God, gracious Lord, thank you, Father, for allowing us this opportunity to come together to fellowship corporately, Lord. We pray that you have been glorified and the saints have been edified, Lord. We ask now, O oh God, as we depart this place, but not your presence. That your heavenly host will encamp around about us, protect us from hurt, harm, and danger. That your Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us in the path of righteousness. God, may it be unto you. May the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. to your life and to um, your families and your homes and as you go about to our father's business doing the will of God. And God came by and visited us on today and we, we, we not only appreciate his presence but we love the things that he does within us as we search deep within our hearts. We invite you to, uh, to give your life to Christ if you don't have a church home or don't know him as your personal savior. Uh, amen. To come into the fold of Christ that you may know and be a good steward, become disciples. A lot of church members, but not a whole lot of disciples. We're asking God to, to strengthen us in that process that we may understand and know. Find a place of worship, get to it, a good Bible learning, uh, classes, teaching, Sunday school, and get ready for uh, his coming back again. I want you to stand by now for some announcements coming from the uh, uh, media ministry lead. Uh, Brother Hearn, and he will okay, let you know exactly what God has in store for you. So that you may want to minister to with either and or make uh, donations as you see fit. So if I would leave anything with you all today through prayer and supplication, amen. We want you to remember Psalms 91. Not to read the whole uh, Psalms itself and, and allow yourself to just get loose and just get into it. And what I love about uh, this particular song, it, it really makes you feel good when you know that God not only is present, but you can feel the presence of God uh, in every aspect. Uh, look what David says. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the, the shadow of the Almighty. And he says, makes this so specific, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And he's my fortress. And amen. He's my God. In him will I trust. So we invite you to just trust God. Trust him in the deepest portion from your soul up through your heart and allow your mind to be focused on him and day in and day out. May God bless you. We'll see you on next Sunday. Stay tuned. Have a great week. Stand by for our Bible study later on uh, during the week. Amen. We invite you to just enjoy the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day on behalf of the First Baptist family and amen. First Lady, myself, and family, we bid you Godspeed. The time has finally come, my brethren. The pastor wants to announce that beginning Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021, in-house services will resume at 11 a.m. Psalm 122, 1 and 2. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And now, here we are standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Even though vaccines are being distributed, 
and given due to the COVID-19 restrictions, temperatures will be checked and social distancing will be in effect in the sanctuary. Masks are protocols and for those who do not have one, we will have one for you. Come let us enjoy the Lord together in song and praise. Services will begin at 11 a.m. There will be no Sunday school at this time. Please pass the word to the membership that beginning Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021, we will resume in-house services. Be on the lookout for more information, and if there are any changes, it will be on Facebook or One Call. Once again, thank you for listening to and watching Faith is Alive Ministries featuring First Baptist Church, Harrisonburg, Virginia, with the Dr. C.E. Williams, Senior Pastor. watching Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C.E. Williams. If you would like to become a partner or sponsor with our ministry, please write to Faith is Alive Ministries, First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 467, Harrisonburg, Virginia 22803. Or visit our website for more information on how to become a partner or sponsor. Our services are every Sunday with Sunday school starting at 9.30 a.m and worship services beginning at 11 a.m. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Contact us on the web at firstbaptisthbgva.org or send us an email to fbcharrisonburg at gmail.com. Stop by and visit where our motto is, Everybody is Somebody. If there's anything we can do to help you on your Christian journey, please feel free to contact us at Great This is Alive Ministries, First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 467, Harrisonburg, 22803. Or call us at 540-434-3969. You can see us here every week at the same channel, same time. Remember, we're one body, many members. May God richly bless you and your family. Once again, thank you for watching Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast located First Baptist Church with the Dr. C.E. Williams, Senior Pastor.